Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this video we're looking at some fun tips when using the new scatter modifier for Blender 5. So in a recent video looking at the Blender 5 new array modifier, I got asked a good question about the scatter modifier and how we can scatter objects perfectly on top of each other, which actually has a few tricks to it in the new modifier. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to S and Shift and Z to make a wide plane and this is going to be let's say a panel that's being used to fix some sort of imperfection or some damage done by some amateur that's just trying to do some desperate repair so we're just going to control an A and apply the scale and we're going to set up our rivets and then we'll look at how we're going to do this so I'm just going to shift an A and I'm going to bring in a round cube let's just G and Y that to the side or X that to the side even I apologise for not having the screencast keys, they don't seem to be working in Blender 5 for this release candidate. And then we'll just fix the sizing of this, now actually that might be okay. Just so you know, this is true in Blender 4.5 as well, the round cube actually gives you a right click option to change the round cube and you get all the presets back. So actually let's make this a little bit rounder, something like that. Then with it selected we're going to shift an S and we're going to bring the cursor to selected and we're going to bring in something that's going to make a slight indent. And obviously we're going to want these objects to be placed right next to each other, well on top of each other, so that we can boolean out the indent from our surface. So let's just shift A mesh and bring in a cylinder, we'll up this to 64 vertices, let's S and Z to make that much thinner, S and shift and Z to make it a little bit wider, something about there, and then what we'll do is just go into edit mode with tab 2, and then I'm going to, oh no, first I'm going to control and apply the scale. Then we'll tab, alt click there and control and B to bevel this to make it nice and rounded, something about there. And then we're going to do the same to the top. Now I've covered this in a recent video, I'll put a link in the description, but I'm just going to go to face mode, alt and N and flip it. And this means that this face, you can see it's slightly changed colour. If I put my face orientation on, you can see it's showing up as an error, it's showing up as red, which means we've got the back face to it. But that means that if I go into edge mode and I'll click there and bevel this, it will bevel to the outside, which is a really nice fun trick. Then this looks a little bit too perfect. So I'm just going to S and Z and sort of just scale this to make it a little bit more, I don't know, natural in terms of a flex. It's not perfect, but it'll be fine. And then I'm just going to G and Z that down so that we know that this cursor here is where the origin is of this object for our rivet, I'm just going to G and Z and bring that just barely above that. And that's going to be our sort of indent that's made by the riveting process. Now let's just make everything clear, I'm going to name this, so just F2 and call this rivet. I'm going to F2 this and call this indent. And then we need a surface to do this on top of, which is going to be here. But our surface modifier would do this on every surface. So what I'm going to do is just tab into edit mode, select that top face, so 3 and there, shift and D, escape, P, and by selection, and now we've got our cube, which is the whole cube, and just the top surface. I'm going to double click there, we could do that with a double click or F2, and call this surface. Now, let's get going. So the scatter on surface modifier, really cool. Add modifier, scatter, scatter on surface, and we get all these representative cubes. And I like the way that they're sort of showing where these are going to be. We're going to do this by density, because while I'd rather do it with a mount, we want to use, or I want to use this disk method, which allows me to set a distance between the objects so we don't get two rivets on top of each other. So we're going to do something like that. Now from these cubes, we can instantly see an issue. We're going to have some going right to the edge, which is a problem. So what I'm going to do for this surface is I'm going to S and Shift and Z to just scale this in a bit somewhere there and importantly I'm going to control an A and apply the scale otherwise my rivets are going to appear smaller than I actually want them. Now at the moment we haven't selected an object yet so as soon as I get my pipette and select this object we'll see that this minimum distance wasn't enough so we can just up that until we get to I don't know somewhere there-ish. So this is our load of rivets that someone's just bolted into this trying to get it to work and I think we need to S and Shift and Z and bring that in a little bit more and then once again apply the scale. There we go. Now we're not going to want to keep this surface. We can see here this sort of face fighting just on this edge so let's get rid of that surface there. And we've got our rivets but we haven't got our bits that we're going to cut out. Now what would be nice is on this surface 
if I could just duplicate this, we can get the option to change our object. Notice that this is currently on top of the other one. So if I change that out and select this for our indent, those should theoretically be on top of each other, but they're not because we're trying to do this to the same object twice. And the reason for that is that we don't have the surface anymore to do this onto. So we can't just do the same thing twice. Even if I come here and realize instances, now everything goes wrong. So this doesn't work. So let's get rid of that and then we'll get rid of that second modifier. What we want to do instead is tell it to keep both things on top of each other. And you'd think we could do something like Control and A and parent to object, but that still doesn't work. We'll just undo that. What we're gonna do instead is select both of these, press M and put new collection. We'll call this scatter objects create. And then we've now got a new collection. What this is gonna allow us to do is come to my scatter on surface, go down to my instancing and instead of selecting object, I'm gonna click collection come to collection, start typing in scatter, click that, and we've got this, but everything's moved. Now, this is a problem, and I'm hoping, I'm currently in the release candidate, that at some point this is going to get fixed. So I'm hoping there is gonna be an option here at some point that's gonna make this work. Now, just going through some other bits before we fix this, we're gonna to need to realize instances so we can actually have these objects available to us. And normally with collections, you will want to click pick instance. Oh look, it's suddenly working. It's sort of great, but not helpful for us. What the pick instance does is for each of these objects, it selects one of them. So we've got approximately, because there's two objects, a 50-50 split between these two objects. So it's picked one each time, but we don't want to do that. We don't want to pick an instance. We want both instances at the same time. And if I can't click this, you'll notice it's the reset transformation that's making this work for us. And if I have this unclicked, this doesn't do anything. This is a real annoyance. This reset transformation needs to be in the actual instancing selection. So this is a little bit silly, but luckily there is a way to fix this and get this put back. Unfortunately, it means that we're gonna to have to go into the geometry node modifier. This isn't gonna be particularly difficult, but I do think this is something that needs fixing. So if we come to our geometry node modifier and we move around, we've got this object here for the instance geometry. So just if I zoom out, it's this box here. It's very clearly labeled. And what we want to do is effectively come down to, again, I'll just zoom out so you can see it. We're looking for this box here where it says collection info we want to be able to click reset children. You'll notice that if this switch is connected here to true, then this one does have reset children on it, but to do that, it's only for the picking instances. So all we want to do is modify this so the reset children is actually on. To do that, we need to come up to this to say, no, we don't want this to be part of our library anymore. We want to change this and then I can just click reset children and it's back in place. As I say, there needs to be an option just to allow this to happen without the pick instance being selected. I guess they didn't think of this use case. I really hope that they fix it. So with that done, we've got everything sorted. Some slight issues though. Each time this picks the instance, this sets up the object with its origin. So the origin for this is here on the line where the surface was. So the surface was on the top of this, well, surface on this face. So what we're going to need to do is just move the object origin of this. So I'm just going to go to object, set origin, and you'll notice we've got our cursor at the origin of this object of our rivet. And that's where we want it to be. So object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And if we come back here now, everything is lower to the place we wanted it to be. Next, so if you want to Boolean this out, we're going to need to apply this. But importantly, this will only work if I've got realize instances on. If I click realize instances off and go to apply, it says we've got no geometry in this modifier. So we need to realize instances for this to work and then we can click and apply. At this point, we've got all of our geometry here, but we need to split it out. So all I'm gonna do is in edit mode, so tab into edit mode, A, P, and then loose parts. And then we've got everything ready to go. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these spheres, so just the spheres, and then shift select the big cube and click H to hide everything. Then I'm going to select all of my parts that we want to select out. You'll notice everything's been renamed surface, so we can't really search easily, which is a little bit annoying. What you could do is once you've selected all this, hit M and make a new collection. Call this indents, create, and then now you've got a new collection with all of these in. We don't necessarily need to do that, but it will make things quicker to select later. So that's definitely an option. Let's just select these again. And then what I'm going to do is just come back here, make my cube visible, select the cube, and then control and minus on my number pad to Boolean all these out. There we go. Then I can just Alt and H to make everything visible again. And I can come down to where I've got that indents collection and just hide those and we'll need to hide our cutters as well because they are cutters. So there we go, we've now got our rivets with our indents around each of the rivets. Just from a 3D modeling point of view, this is quite handy because it gives a nice surface because once you put something like a wash on, it gives it a slight indent to go into so it'll really emphasize the rivets. But either way, it's something quite useful to do. I've just realized that this is too rounded and I should have applied the scale on this indent. So do know that when you scatter your objects, it will not have the scale that you've given it unless you've applied it. So do bear that in mind. But anyway, that gives you the idea of what to do and how we can have multiple objects placed on top of each other and that trick that we have to do with geometry nodes. As always, if that's been useful, hitting that like button would be really appreciated. And I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day, guys.